Okay, welcome to the Stampscapes Lab Quick Card Stamp Along. I hope you join in and try this out. We have three one inch by two inch clayboard art tiles. They're really fun to use. They're kind of the domino size art tiles. Now, one of the things that I did before I started this was I dabbed the edges in my gold pigment ink. So you, you just kind of tap it down in there. I kind of rub, you know, run it along there a little bit just to get a little bit of that gold metallic um, edging on these pieces. And I think I do think that makes the um, the art tiles look a little bit more elegant. Let me show you what they look like. Just untreated. It's just the straight um, plain um, board on the edge. So that little gold um, edging right there really kind of adds a nice special touch, I believe, to the presentation. All right. Now my perimeters are still a little bit wet, but I didn't want to go out and take the time to <laughs> let these dry. I wanted to get right into this, but I would normally let them dry a little bit. You can see myself, get, you know, a little getting a little smudgy on the sides like that. But not to worry, that's not really going to matter um, in the way that we um, approach this piece. Okay, so I have, I'm going to do this one in a sunset color uh, scheme. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, um, going to do a braring technique on here, just for a really fast application of colors on here. We'll stay with my Lakeside Cove Large right here, or this one's the Lakeside Cove Small that I used on this one. I'm going to use the Lakeside Cove Large on this one just to make things go just slightly faster, okay? But let's get into this. You don't have, I'm going to go with Marvies. You can go with any kind of dye based inks that you want on here. Or if you have some other type of um, coloring technique that you want to use, you want to use little washes of watercolors or alcohol inks or anything like that to get this kind of background um, situation established. Go with just about anything. You just don't want to go like super, super dark to where when we stamp this image in black, you can't even see it against the background, okay? Now, I, I would suggest laying down some kind of color on here. It's just going to make it more interesting. I want to just go with this bare, you know, white tiles, okay? Okay. So, let's see here. I'm just just get my brayer established with this. Now, when I'm saying you can get, you know, other types of media laid down on your tiles, you know, if it's a technique that, you know, you don't have to use or you don't, you wouldn't use a brayer, then don't use the brayer, okay? Like alcohol inks or something like that. Okay, I'm just getting a good coating here with this. I noticed I got a little bit of that uh, gold from the side by going going over the side, but again, that's not really going to matter too much, or if at all, okay? Now I laid down my yellow over this entire surface, or on all three surfaces, I should say, okay? Now let's get that ink off of this or most of it. You don't need to wash this off because we're going to going to be doing a color blend, okay? So I'm inking up here and I'm not inking up the whole um, range of it, okay? Now there's a couple different approaches. There's not a huge amount of space on this tile. I mean, it's only two inches long like that. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'll bring this up like this. Now stay in that one area for a little bit longer, okay? Don't go down um, into your tile as fast, okay? I'm going to change my um, rotation of this a little bit as I could do this. Okay, now here's what I'm going to do. This is what I like to do on mine. I mean, you could just have it go from light to dark up here if you want to, but I'm going to go from dark to light to a little bit darker again, okay? Like this. And I think that kind of looks pretty cool when it, it looks like a little bit of a horizon glow on my lakeside cove right down here. Okay, so hopefully, see this little um, area right in here? Hopefully we'll have that little glow right behind 
our Lakeside Cove, okay? All right, now that was the orange. That was a pretty dark orange. That was a darker orange than I thought it would be. That one, that one wasn't straight orange. It was, um, let's see, what was this called? Terracotta, actually. Okay, so let's see about this one right here. This is a uh, English red. So it's probably a little bit darker, I'm not sure. That's really juicy now too. So I'm gonna be careful about this one. If it was a little bit drier, it's probably a little bit easier to handle. Let's go like that. Let's roll some of this off now, okay? I've laid it down right there, but now I'm just going to blend in what I've already applied a little bit. You get a little bit of unevenness, so you just keep rolling it like this, okay? And we'll get that kind of blended in like so. All right, so we have something like that. I'm gonna go on with my dry side here and kind of blend out the bottom a little bit more. Like about like that, okay. I think at this point in time, I'm kind of removing off some of that ink because it's just it's just laid down in such a huge slather. Let me go for a little bit more of this English red. You can use, you can transition it into violet or something like that if you want to as well. Okay, here's a little bit. Okay, so I'm going with a little bit of a lighter touch here so that it is transferring. When I was going a little bit harder, it was kind of removing just because of the ink buildup. Now it's ink buildup, but it's also kind of in a really um, damp area of the uh, tiles like that. When you use a brayer application like that with a lot of ink, it does transfer a lot of ink down. So it's pretty, um, it's got a pretty strong slathering of um, ink on there. Uh, in between colors, you could heat set just slightly. Okay, so we have this right now. And, um, you could allow that to dry if you want to, but I'm just going to go straight in with my image now. And this is what you do. When you have smaller um, surfaces in these tiles, okay, not really with a piece of paper. A piece of paper, you couldn't really do this. If it's, you know, like malleable and flimsy, but these tiles are, you know, like wooden pieces, okay? You go tile to stamp when you're making your impression. Okay, so I'm going to take and use just about any kind of, you know, whatever black ink you want. You can use a, a real super dark um, pigment ink, like a Versafine Clear if you want to. You know, I don't know. You can use a stays on. If you use a stays on, you have to move a little bit faster than I am. Um, this is just my standard Marvy dye right here. Um, Hybrid ink would probably work just fine. Um, I don't know, what, whatever whatever your, your favorite black ink is. These tiles can pretty much take just about anything. Okay, now, it, I don't... One of these is kind of the central piece here. I don't know if these ones really matter, you know, if I kind of move these around. It's not really going to matter because one side's not really so much different than the other. Okay, but what I do do is when I'm taking this, I'm going to start off with my impression. I'm going to aim for that area right in here, right down in here. If you go like a quarter inch higher or lower, it's not really going to matter. Um, but I'm going to aim kind of this area up here a little bit higher like that, as opposed to stamping down here, okay? But I'm starting with the center one, okay? Because if I want this imagery to be kind of centralized on these three across these three pieces it's just easier to do it in the center and then you can work left and right okay rather than going like this here and then it's like oh my gosh i'm kind of off center you know by the time you lay down this one and this one if you're going left to right or right to left okay now see right here what you do is you just hold that down and i'm laying this one down like this i'm touching this little area down here a little bit Press and hold for a little bit, allow some of that ink to transfer, and then you can hold these down with two fingers or whatever, whatever's most comfortable for you. Lay this down, like about like so. And then hold this down like this, and then you're making your impressions. 
And again, um, you're making your impressions, but you're allowing that ink to transfer. Remember, I'm holding this down for quite a bit here too, uh, quite a bit of time because the tiles are really saturated with a lot of um, dye-based ink right now. So you're stamping wet into wet. And when you do that, be it on a piece of paper, uh, you know, cardstock, or in this case on the art tiles, you have to kind of let that ink set up a little bit, allow it to, it's not going to dry in this time that I'm holding this down, but um, it'll dry a little bit. It'll kind of move towards drying, but also you're allowing that ink to um, penetrate the uh, surface of the uh, tiles for a little bit longer than just lifting it up right after, you know, contact because it could uh, take off the moisture like a, like a vacuum. Okay, I think that's about enough time right there. Okay, so we have this is going to be on, let me see, this side like that. We have this center one like this. And we'll go like this. And there that edges. So there you have that little horizon glow in there. That one could have been a little bit darker, you know, if I held that down longer. Maybe that was the last one that I um, applied down there. So you take tile to stamp like that so you don't get these gaps in between. See, if I tried to just stamp this like this right over the top, there'd probably be some gaps in between, um, you know, those connection points. Um, with the black imagery on there, but see here's that little horizon glow on there. I didn't leave too much of it, but I think it looks just fine like that. All right, now this is um, stamp boards, so if you want to, you don't have to do this, you can just utilize these as kind of three-dimensional pieces, but if you want to, you can take your scratch knives, and I'll leave a link to these. Um, these are the speedball ones that I use. And you can just kind of, you know, add a little bit of a highlight on top of your rocks in here. I'm not going to do too much. No, I don't scratch on this one here, right here. I'm not going to scratch all the way down to white. Well, maybe a little bit. But I'm just kind of removing a little bit of the top layer of some color. Maybe down to the, mostly the yellow. But it leaves them a little bit more kind of dimensional and illusional, um, or not illusional, but dimensional, and it gives the illusion of um, kind of a three-dimensional object when you have a highlight like that. Okay, so um, let me do another thing too. Down here in the rocks, I mean, there's shadows in my design itself. But one of the things that's kind of fun is just to add a little bit of an extra sh shading. And what you do is you don't you don't do it that with black, but you do it with like a like a color. Okay, so I'm I'm just going with a color that's a little bit darker than the color that's already laid down. I need to be really careful about that because that ink is really wet. Normally you want to wait for a little bit of time, you know, before you start inking up like that. Now the alcohol ink shouldn't smear any of your imagery. It's smearing mine right now because everything is like super wet, but I'll just go a little bit of shading down like this. I'll just do it real subtle. I'd go a little bit more, but my, you know, my ink is a little bit wet. So I've just kind of added like this tone of uh, like olive brown here, just at the base of some of these rocks. So I put a little bit of a shadow at the base of the rock and then we have the highlight on the top of the rock like that. Okay, now this is kind of more sunsetty, but one of the things that's kind of fun to do, I mean, you can add in like a little crystal or something like that if you want to, or golden stars, you know, to go along with your golden um, color scheme right here. But one of the things about, okay, this isn't the spoon one here. I'm just going to do a little bit of a little star. It's like the first star is the night type of thing. Or maybe this is maybe this is sun or sunrise, you know, where you still see a little bit of the uh, the stars out. It'd be a little bit better if it was a little bit darker. You can see those 
but having a little bit of texturing up there is really fun. If you don't have the uh, scratch knives, you can just add that in with you know your uh, gel pens or paint pens like this. And we have our three pieces like this. Now all I need to do, I don't, I feel that spray sealing these really finishes off these tiles really nicely. You can see on this one right here. Uh, hopefully you can see this, but it's kind of shiny. Okay, my tiles. And that really gives these a really good finished kind of feel and look to them. And after we do this, we'll just get this um, double mounted and I'll show you how I do that. And then uh, we'll finish off our card here. Okay, I've hit these three pieces with a Krylon triple thick. And I'll show you how glossy these look right here. See that shine to them? And the triple thick, it dries surprisingly pretty fast. It dries faster than you think it would. Okay, now, one of the things I like on my pieces is a double mount or mat, okay? And, I don't know, I think it gives it a nice kind of look um, and a real finished look. One of the things I, I tried on, you know, this piece right here that I really liked was the wood-grained paper in the back. Now you can do this with any kind of paper that you want. I would recommend going with a warm tone though. And you don't have to go with the, uh, you know, the mirrored um, gold like that. Okay, now to mount these um, tile pieces, you don't need anything special. It's, um, just a, your tape runner. And I'm just going to go with just one line right down there. Um, my tape runner is a permanent, so it really is quite aggressive, okay? And you just go left to right, okay? We'll lay that down like that. Make sure you get these in order. And I'm going to go with a, a little bit of a gap in between. I think that's, you know, the thing that I like about these tiles right here. Otherwise, if you don't do the gap, then you would just, you know, you just do it with one one you know, piece. There's no point if you're going to put these all together like that. So you do the presentation a little bit in between. Now, some people ask me, hey, can you cut the um, tiles with uh, like a larger tile into three pieces? And I, you know, maybe if someone had some um, equipment and power tools, you can do that. Um, you'd probably need some kind of special blade so that's not chipping the edges too. So I'd recommend just going with the tiles. It's like, it would be like cutting through um, like a clipboard or something like that. You can't really do it with crafting um, types of uh, tools, like a, you know, any type of trimmers or um, like mat knives or exacto knives, that type of thing. Okay, now I'm giving this, uh, I'm just eyeballing it. I'm giving it probably like a, I don't know, maybe like an eighth of an inch perimeter. If you're a little bit more or less, or if you're kind of uneven, like I probably am all the time, you know, it's not really going to matter too much. All right, so we have that, and they're all kind of, they're all floppy on this. You know, this piece of uh, wood grain paper is really thin. I have a piece of um, my scrap uh, gold here. This gets a little tricky right here. You want to get, you know, as close to the edge on this as you can. But again, you know, it's not that critical. Okay, and I, I usually put another piece right down this middle like that. And on this one, I usually go for, uh, I usually go for a little bit of a bigger border, but I'm going to be putting this just on a quarter page piece of paper. So I'm being a little bit more, um, conservative in terms of my border right here. Usually for that second border, I like to go at least double um, the perimeter, you know, between that first um, mount. Okay, let's see. I'll go out like that. And I, oh my God, I just totally scored off of my line right there. 
I made a boo-boo. <laughs> let me see. Uh, let me take a look at this. Yeah, maybe that's a pretty big cut. Here, I'm going to do this. Hey, that happens, you know, sometimes. I'm going to cut this gold off. Now, I can't remove this piece of gold from that um, wood, so I'm just going to trim this off like this. Uh, I'm talking about the gold. And we'll just do it again. So you're getting your... Um, we keep it real on the, uh, the Stampscapes uh, lessons here. <laughs> I don't edit, I'm not going to edit that out. What you see is what you get on my videos, uh, which is not good sometimes because it makes my, my videos are kind of long and rambling a lot. Okay, so let's, let's try this again. So see, I cut out most of that. There's a little bit of that gold. Actually, that looks pretty cool like that. Just with that little bit of gold like that. Let me see something. Nah, that's not enough gold. Okay, I, I was I was saying there's a little bit of that shine right there, but there's not enough for me. All right, let's let's see if we can do this correctly this time. This tape's gonna. If you ever get this tape runner kind of gummed up, it means there's a little ball of glue there, and you just kind of take that out of there like that. All right, let me see if I can do this. Uh, Best. That little border, though, it does look kind of cool because it has a different shine to it. Maybe I've discovered something, you know, that I can do. I won't, though, probably. But you can do that little, like, that hairline type of um, gold. Okay, I'm doing my cut here a little bit more carefully, keeping my blade against the uh, straight edge here. All right, this is the one where I screwed up. All right. You, what you do is you just do a lighter cut, you know, and then you just do it several times like that. I don't know, I went a little bit too heavy. All right, so this is getting to be a lot of uh, layers here with that extra gold layer, but so be it. adhesive in there. All right, so we're almost there, and I'm going with a, uh, a purple card base. I thought it looked kind of cool. You know, this one is black right here, but the purple looks pretty good with the, um, you know, this color scheme, you know, uh, purple and gold's kind of regal. And, all right, now I just need to stamp out you can do any kind of word stamp in, down here that you want to, um, you know. Thinking of you, miss you, happy whatever, birthday, happy anniversary, whatever. I'm going to do this lake one again, though. I, I really like that lake quote there by Thoreau. And uh, let me see, I'll do it in purple again. I'll need to read this. Uh, what a drag. <laughs> All right, let me get that quote stamp. Okay, I decided to go with a different quote. I like this. Nature is the uh, art of God uh, by Thomas Brown here. And I thought that was, you know, it kind of fits with the, um, the formatting here. Um, in terms of um, kind of a longer quote like that horizontal kind of configured one and it has a little bit of a stronger kind of uh, main um, font in the uh, in the quote okay so when you get ink on your quote stamps go for a real kind of even coding of them let me do a test print <laughs> I, I thought eh I usually don't do test prints but on this one here, it's probably a good idea because there's um, kind of some fine 
text down at the base where it's the, the person's name. Okay, I thought I built up a little bit too much ink down there. The top part looks really good though. Okay, let's see if we can get this uh, coated up nice and evenly. And I do these little micro taps like that to um, get that ink on there. It, I'm we're spending a little bit more time because pigment ink is really thick, okay, and it can potentially fill in some of the uh, those gaps, you know, within the text in really small text. In fact, I might have filled it up more this time. I'm not sure. All right, forgive my head right here. Um, I'll try to get that nice and straight. If it isn't straight, one of the things about quotes, I always try going direct. And if I have it kind of at an angle, if I didn't get it straight enough, I, I, I never get it perfectly straight. But if I don't get it straight enough, it's like totally at an angle. Then I'll stamp it on a separate piece of paper and then I'll mount it down there, okay? I mean, it ends up looking better if you do it that way, you know, but it takes more time to do, and I'm kind of lazy. People don't think I am, but I, I do go, you know, for the quickest way to get some sort of statement down if it looks good, you know. All right, again, I'm kind of allowing the ink to transfer a little bit. I'm kind of spending a little bit less, pre or using a little bit less pressure on the bottom portion of it. Um, just because, you know, the, the text was smaller, and I think eh, I might have filled in some of those um, areas in there. Okay, not too bad. All right, so it's, you know, it's stamped out pretty good on there. I could have used a little bit more of a transfer, but I think it's okay, all right? And plus it's gold, so it's a little bit, you know, reflective down there in the uh, text area like that. So what time are we at here? Well, this is a pretty quick card right here. I think I am going to, I'm gonna do something on this card here. Um, since we're still at a, a reasonable um, time right here for a quick card, I am just going to take and I can do one of my little scratch stars, which I did on my previous one. But I'm just going to take a little dab of glue right here in that corner right there. And let's add in a little crystal. I won't go for too big of a one. Okay. And I'm just going to go for the clear crystal right here. I'm going to put that down right there. And we'll have a little bit of a, you know, little starlight in the scene like so. And we'll take a look here. Maybe that stands out a little bit too much. So let's go back to our... I was going to do the scratch, but I'm scratching through a lot of um, thick... Um, Krylon there, so I'll add in a couple little stars like this. Okay, so that gives a little bit of continuity, you know, with that um, star right there. Here, let's go for a little bit of a larger one. I'm kind of balancing things out of touch. All right, so there we go. I have something like that. A little bit of a twinkly star like so. I have our gold features like that. And I wonder if that star is a little bit too big big in there. That white is um, kind of glue around there, and that'll go transparent when it dries. Yeah, I think it looks okay. All right, so here, here we have a, um, a pretty quick card application. Now, this one right here took a little bit longer because I was doing this kind of glow around on the perimeter like that. And, um, you know, getting this, you know, just quick um, 
sunsetty kind of colored background was really easy. You can do these backgrounds in whatever color you, scheme you want. I think this scene right here would look really fantastic as a blue one, like a winter or a nighttime type of scene. You can do it in really dark blues, and maybe I'll try that. Um, you can stamp out your imagery, maybe over the top of a darker background with white ink. And I think that might be pretty dramatic looking. I'll have to try that sometime and see how it looks. I don't know if I've done that before on the art tiles. I don't know if I've done a reverse impression on them before over a darker background. Now, if I did that, I would have to, you know, add the, add those colors down and then allow it to dry um, a little bit before I stamped out white over the top of it because the white um, never really gives me like a super strong, opaque application of white over the background, okay? So the best success for that would be to do it uh, over a dry surface, of course. I'm just kind of thinking out loud here. Or maybe you can even, you can emboss on these tiles too. Maybe you can do an embossed white on the tiles in white detailed embossing powder maybe over kind of a darker background. I think that would look pretty cool. And then, boy, that would be a raised um, image. And then if you spray seal it, it would be like a super kind of three-dimensional type of, um, you know, impression type of thing. Glossy, you know, and then it's raised on the tiles themselves. So yeah, it might be kind of interesting. All right. So anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if you've tried this out and you're stamping along with me, I hope you enjoyed the process. But um, these little triptych-ish types of um, pieces like this, I think can be um, a really dramatic presentation uh, for the recipient of your cards. Um, you can mail these through the mail. It it's probably going to bump up the uh, the ounce rate to the two or three ounce rate. Um, so, but, you know, if you do something like that, I'd probably put a piece of, like, chipboard over the front of this, like this, and then mail it that way, so it's, you know, uh, cut out, like, a little piece of chipboard, or, I don't know, a thick piece of, um, cardstock or something like that, and put it over the top of it. It's still, um, you know, I mean, it, it's not raised out, in, like, a super, you know, thick parcel or anything like that, but, um, it would adjust the weight. Uh, something like this, I would say it's probably in the two ounce rate as opposed to the one ounce. Okay, thanks for watching.